one, they're not calling him a threat to democracy. They're not calling him a fascist. I mean, they're, Monday, not, they're not they calling can. him anything. They on, can. on Monday, they was just calling him that. I would think that, you know, if you really believe that, then somebody's speech would be about how America effed up and how, nope. how things are about to be Surely. really bad. He's the alone. most powerful man in the world uh, well, now. It just makes you wonder how much of it, uh, did they really believe or how much of it was just politics? Now. Democrats are turning away from calling Trump a Nazi, a fascist, or even a racist since he won the, the election, which begs the question, was the name calling just harmful rhetoric, just facets of politics? So let's debate it. For more, let's welcome in Newsweek columnist and New York Times bestselling author Alice Hennigan, along with political analyst Whitley Yates. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Alice, good morning. I'll start with you. Uh, look, Democrats have now toned down that rhetoric since Trump won. Does that prove that this Nazi fascist talk was all just politics? Well, it, it is all politics. I mean, both sides are saying the horrible things about the other. Listen, let's hope that the temperature lowers, that people have reasonable conversations. By the way, you remember who started the fascist thing, right? It wasn't Democrats. It was the president's former chief of staff, General Kelly, who was the one who... Who, who first who, who first brought that up. But I think we can all agree it would be much better if we could lower the temperature, if we could reduce our volume. But in order to do that, we have to recognize that it's true on both sides, right? It was uh, Donald Trump who said that a Jew would have to be crazy to vote for uh, Kamala Harris. A black person would have to be crazy. It was, it was the president who said that... Uh, the media was enemy of the people, the Democrats were the enemy within. So, so I will concede that there were issues on both sides, but if we only think it's one side, it's not going to get any better. I promise you that. Sure. Um, Whitley, do you agree? The difference is that one built an entire campaign focused on fear-mongering, misinformation, and identity politics. And when that House of Cards toppled on Election Day, they had nothing else. When you manufacture fake momentum around the country, when you focus solely on the race of someone and not the results that they've had while they were in office, and you think that you're going to be able to win the popular vote in the Electoral College, and it doesn't turn out that way, all of a sudden you have to start singing another tune. And so Democrats are literally singing a different tune. I think when it comes to race, we have to look at uh, the way that both of them have handled this. Trump gets called a racist. Um, and Kamala Harris ran on race, uh, many people would say. But Trump was the one who ended up winning a record number of black and Hispanic voters. What, why is that? What's your takeaway with that, Alice? Well, it, this isn't going to get better unless you can acknowledge both sides. I mean, do you all remember uh, Trump calling uh, Kamala Harris a communist over and over and over again? Agree. I can see that we would be better off as a country if we would have calmer and more measured political dialogue. But, boy, I, I, I'm really pleading with you. I'm pleading with you that this is going to get any better. Both sides, both sides need to acknowledge that the rhetoric ought to tone down. And let's see. I mean, the president's the one who's going to set the tone. Let's let's see the kind of rhetoric we get going forward. That's really going to be the test here. You don't have to plead with me, Ellis. That's <laughs> you can plead with the audience, Good. but not me. But Good. Um, I'm glad. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But Whitley, do you agree? Do you think both sides here? Is it does Trump need to tone things down too? I mean, I think Trump needs to turn turn things up for the American people. When it comes to it's race, hot. I do find it interesting um, that you have someone who was consistently called a racist, consistently called a fascist, consistently called Hitler, those who supported him garbage, and the very minorities that they said that he was racist against is what carried him over the finish line. I think it's a rejection of a lot of the mainstream media narrative, and people are able to make their own decisions and not to be indoctrinated by any types of narratives they've clearly rejected that specifically minorities and the very people that you attempted to drive a wedge through or that the liberals attempted to drive a wedge through is exactly the red wave that carried them over all right we have one minute left i'm going to give you 30 seconds each ellis take it away well that answer saddens me i mean seriously because because i'm really hoping we can reach out and we can calm it down but if all you guys want to do is complain about the about Democrats and, and how awful they are and how terrible they are. By the way, do, do you remember who it is that brought up the American Hitler analogy? That's the guy who's the vice president, going to be the vice president right now. He's the one who called Donald Trump America's Hitler. So, so let's concede that there is a rough and unfortunately nasty and, and overblown language in both directions. 
But I got to tell you, unless both sides are willing to cop to that, none of this is going to get any better. Whitley? You know, I will say that the rhetoric definitely needs to turn down because when your rhetoric ends in assassination attempts, then you know that we have a problem in this country. The truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, America mandated and spoke very clearly that they are no longer accepting the ideals of the political left and have overwhelmingly accepted the ideas of Donald Trump and the right. And so now, as a country, let's move forward and make America great again. Uh, just more hostility, I'm afraid. No, I think we all just need to come in for one big, giant, nationwide oh, group good. hug. That's I love what... it. Let's do it. we gotta, <laughs> we got to make this country great. We really do. I mean, you know, we got to make it better. We do. All right. This... Alison all right. again, Whitley. Good yes. to see you guys. Thank you both so much. Uh, hope springs eternal on my end. I'm going to keep hopeful. <laughs> okay. All right. President